That's why a lot of times a new person comes in and finds God, they're the best soul winner in the church. And what that is is a lesson from God said, every one of you need to get back to being like that. You don't go to Bible college to become what God wants you to be. You become a new convert again and again and again. You get excited again about what you've got. Wow! Wow! It's a mercy of God. You pick up that Bible, you've been serving God 40 years, and it's new again. It's fresh. Oh, you gotta, oh, you gotta take a look at what God is doing today. God is so good. Now I'm finishing shortly. But he that believes on him is not condemned. So that if that's the truth, do you believe the Bible? If he that believeth on him is not condemned, that means that everybody that ever went to a Billy Graham crusade and went up front to pray when George Beverly Shea was singing, Just As I Am, were not condemned. If that message you're thinking up, you need to get back to the Word of God. I'm reading the Bible here. This is a whosoever will book. This is whosoever shall book. And this is he that believeth on him is not condemned. Red letter, words of Jesus writing, and he's right. But what we'll do, we're not careful to say, yeah, but we're not Baptist. Well, neither was Jesus. But sure, we sure can brag about it when a Baptist becomes a Pentecostal, can't we? And Jesus gives them the Holy Ghost while they're still Baptist. Some people can't accept their Holy Ghost until they become a Pentecostal. Who are you? Do you give them the Holy Ghost? If this Holy Spirit came from God, you know, and when they become a Pentecostal, oh, yeah, this is brother so-and-so, especially if he pays good tithes. It's the same Holy Ghost he got when he was over there in Presbyterian or Methodist Church. Same spirit. But the difference is he changed labels now. Came acceptable amongst the capital B believers. I am a real believer. As I've said many times, Jesus Christ goes to church every time the church doors open. And as soon as somebody shows up in a Methodist church, Jesus is there. As soon as somebody shows up in a Catholic mass, Jesus is there. You may not want to believe it, and you may want to stone me to death, but I'm joining in with Jesus' crowd, whether you like me or not. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Now, I want to make it plain. I have a tendency to say, I'm not saying you're saved, I'm not saying you're saved to satisfy all those who are trying to figure out what I'm saying, because I'm being judged right now by a lot of people around who think they know me. But I'm also here to proclaim, no matter what they think, that if you believe, you're not condemned. That's the Word of God. And certainly not condemned by Jesus. And if you're not condemned by Jesus, who are we to condemn these people? Come down and start giving a little bit. Get out there among somebody that doesn't see what you see. And thank God for what God has given them. The grace and the mercy to come out of darkness and be able to say, Thank you, Jesus. I have accepted you as my Lord and my Savior. I thank everybody that comes in contact with that. Rather than think in your mind, I know more than you do. I've got more than you have. you got a lot to learn. You need to stop that. Come down and start giving a little bit. It wouldn't hurt for you to rejoice with them because they have been brought out. They have been delivered. They have been set free. Your responsibility is to go on and help them to go forward. Don't condemn them.
And we don't need debates where at what point is the blood applied. Probably at a point you need to find if you've got that in your mind. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And this is the condemnation. And this is the condemnation. And this needs to be the only condemnation that there is. That light is come into the world. And men loved darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. And we can set ourselves up as real Christians. And say, yeah, the world's really like that. But the more I live and the longer I go, the more I realize that a lot of people who claim to have salvation are not serving God. Their deeds are evil. Backstabbing, being mean to one another, putting up walls of division, debating Thank you, Jesus. I believe it's possible that in Jesus' name, Holy Ghost filled, tongue talking person can live in this world and have a friend that does not believe this and be a friend and not cram it down their throat and find out where they are and walk with them and kindness, and yet not lose what you've got. Well, we're all scared. You know, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but we got it somewhere. <laughs> Don't, thou shalt not watch TV. Huh? Where'd that coming from? Uh, we're Pentecostals. We don't watch TV. What's that got to do with anything? We're looking for people. What if they're watching TV? Thou shalt not preach to them if you are on TV. Whose rule is that? Thou shalt not go where they are. Thou shalt not communicate with them if it's that particular type of media. Why do you teach this stuff? Because we're afraid that somebody involved in this might get affected by that. Afraid? Where'd that spirit come from? You'd be better off preaching on TV than to have a spirit of fear driving your ministry. And anybody doesn't have enough salvation to be able to choose what to watch or not watch, or whether to even have one or not have one, needs somebody that's humble enough to let Jesus use them to let them know it's not what you own or don't own, what you watch or don't watch. It's whether you love God enough that, and, and whether I love God enough that we can accept His kindness, His grace, His meekness, His plan of salvation. Hallelujah. It's not about radio, internet, or television. It's people that God so loved that He gave His only begotten Son. And He says in His Word that we are also begotten, begotten by the Word of God. And He wants us to be fellow heirs, joint heirs, brethren with Christ.